What we pilots can learn a lot from Japanese train drivers when it comes to safety. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is your Captain Baja speaking. Hello everyone, this is Captain Baja. Welcome to my channel where I talk about anything about aviation, safety, my travels and even more stuff. Today we're going to talk about my experience of a train travel, yes, train travel as an airline pilot in Japan. We go there quite a bit and on my trips, once in a while, I get a chance to actually go out and explore the city. The beautiful Japanese landscape, the wonderful Japanese people never cease to amaze me every time I go there. In my trips about two years ago, I ended up going to a train museum in, outside of Nagoya. Well, I had plenty of time in my hand and I also was fascinated with trains like I was with airplanes when I was growing up. This was a perfect opportunity for me to see the history of Japanese railroads, which is very extensive. J Japan, despite the fact that it's an island, has a very extensive uh, railroad system. So in order to go there, I got out of my hotel, which was actually right next to a train station, and I ended up traveling in one of the local trains. What was very interesting to me was the fact that while I was traveling, I was riding on the very first car, I noticed some gestures by the train drivers. Turns out that this was a system that was developed by the Japanese uh, in early 1900s when they first introduced trains to their um, transportation system. So I'm going to probably butcher the Japanese of it, but it's called Shisakanko. Basically, it means point and call or point and tell. This is a very interesting concept because before we talk about the aviation impact of it, let's talk about a little bit more about the Japanese railroad. Japanese are known for their engineering marvels uh, that they built, like Shinkansen train, their construction engineering, it's top of the line in the world. They're, they do everything. Again, I'm really fascinated by the way that they do the things, and this is one of them. Japanese railroad safety is almost second to none. They had one big fatal crash in their history. Other than that, like the Shinkansen system, the railroad system that goes all the way up to 320 kilometers per hour, they actually had never had fatal accidents, according to my sources. So if I'm wrong, please comment below. It, they carried 10 billion passengers without any deaths uh, that are caused by um, either a collusion or derailment. So it, the safety of the railroad system is immaculate. So in order to make this thing very good, very safe, what they decided and what they found out through the studies that pointing and calling certain things in a railroad while they're driving it, like pointing at the uh, speed limitations, pointing at the station sign, and calling out on their own compartment where they drive the train, it increases the safety by tremendous amount. This is actually something that we can learn. How can we adapt this thing to aviation? It is very interesting because of the fact that, you know, today when we're flying an airline as a crew, we are actually adapting to certain rules or certain methodologies. There are different variations of this Japanese railroad system. So depending on the airline, the procedures vary slightly, but the, the core of the procedure calls for at least calling for the target altitude when they are changing the altitude, uh, or the procedure calls for calling out the altitude and then pointing at it and then changing the altitude. And this is done in a sort of like a back and forth fashion. For instance, uh, pilot monitoring calls for the altitude and pilot flying sometimes they are reaching out to the MCP or if you're an Airbus driver whatever you guys call it and then you just basically change that altitude but you do that and then you don't activate it until it's confirmed both by both pilots. This is a very important aspect because of the fact that there are two major violations that pilots do when they uh, when they're flying an airplane or when they're in the ground. Actually, one of them is in the ground, the other one is in the air. Altitude violations are huge. 
ATC tells you to climb to flight level 240. Sometimes you hear it as 240 or sometimes you hear it as 250. It actually happened to me once when I was flying in my previous airline many years ago, but I still remember it so vividly because it was a altitude violation. So for instance, I think I was in the Philadelphia area uh, and they told us to descend to flight level, I don't know what, let's call it uh, flight level 190. Or zero. And then uh, we were at, uh, let's call it 250. And 190 or zero, for some reason, we understood it as something else. And it was below going below 18,000 feet. And as we were descending through, uh, the <laughs> controller came back and said, hey, Brickyard, blah, blah, blah. Where are you going? By the way, Brickyard was our company's call sign. It still is, actually, for the company that I used to work for. And we immediately stopped our descent. We inquired with the ATC, and then we just basically corrected the mistake. The, the controller basically, since we were going to come down eventually, tell, told us, hey, you know, just you can stay at that altitude. But it was a violation. We violated the airspace. We violated the ATC instructions that they were given to us. So in this case, you file a report, aviation system, uh, aviation safety system, or uh, as we call it, ASAP, uh, captures this report and then you just basically capture all these mistakes so that you can actually train the pilots or increase the training in the areas where pilots make most amount of mistakes. Well, if we have pointed out, because at the time we had only a measure of calling out the altitude, if I'm not mistaken, but if we had the habit of pointing out and if we had the habit of getting to the habit of verifying the altitude, with the ATC, instead of just verifying among ourselves, we would not have committed this mistake. The other problem that we face in the aviation world, one of the biggest mistakes that we make in aviation as pilots is while we're on the ground taxiing, especially if you're in an airport that you're not really familiar with, especially if you're in an airport that it's just basically so huge that they have taxiways with named so many with letters and numbers and so forth, then it becomes a problem. Situational awareness is a key when you're flying, even on the ground or when you're obviously in the air. So one of the things that we can do, for instance, in order to avoid this mistake, we can actually verbally talk, talk it out while we are taxiing on the ground. I know it sounds really awkward, but once in a while, you fly with pilots that they're a little bit aware of this issue. So they verbalize to the direction that they're going to turn before you take the turn. Um, in some airlines or in some airliners, in, in, in some aircraft, you cannot taxi if you're in first officer. In a 747, for instance, we have tillers, the, the steering gear or steering wheel on both sides, and our company allows us to taxi as, as, as FOs and obviously captains uh, taxi as well. In some airlines, despite the fact that they might have two tillers on each side, well, only captains taxi. Regardless of who's taxiing, in this case, verbalizing the direction that you're taking a turn. For instance, you hear the um, ATC says, Boeing 101, uh, turn right on taxiway Sierra, left turn on Tango, and hold short of 3-4 left. I'm just making up the, an instruction for you. So in this case, you actually find the location on your map. In some air, uh, airplanes, you have actually moving maps. You take a note of that, and then you just basically verbalize where you're going to go. And as you're making the right turn to Sierra, or as you're approaching the right turn on Sierra, we just say, hey, I'm making the right turn on Sierra. But if we adopt the Japanese method of doing it, we can actually point it at the, at the uh, taxiway and we can just verbalize it that way. Believe it or not, this will increase the chances of getting it right so tremendously. According to the studies, if you point and call instead of just calling it, th that reduces the amount of mistakes by 85%. Imagine that. Taxiway incursions or runway incursions, if you're going into the runway uh, while you're taxiing by mistake, these have caused a lot of problems, including some accidents in the aviation history. Just these two examples that are major uh, problems when it comes to flying, taxiing uh, on, on an airport taxiway and on a runway, 
and uh, altitude violations because of the fact that you went over the altitude that it's assigned during a climb or went below the altitude that it was assigned during a descent. If it can point and call the altitudes and the taxiways, I think we will have less and less problems. This could also be adapted not only by a two-person crew, but by a single pilot that they're flying. Point and call methods could also benefit a general aviation pilot or a pilot that is just basically flying a single pilot aircraft. It could be even a jet. It, there are certain jets that could be flown with uh, one pilot only. So it, it is not a solution for only a crew environment, but it is also a great solution for general aviation pilots as well. In uh, 2020, in September, unfortunately, the safety records of general aviation have not been great. So this is one of the things that we can adapt in our flying while you're um, flying in even a Cessna 152 or, you know, anything else that you're flying, you can adapt these rules, you can adapt these habits, get into the habits of calling out the taxiways, calling out the altitudes, get into the habit of pointing at different things on your um, airplane and calling them out just to remind yourself, just to hear the voice that you're going to get um, from your mouth to your ear it is going to increase your safety margins. This is it for now for, from Kaptan Baha, and I hope to see you on a different video. Remember, every Saturday there's a different video about a different subject, and once a month I'm gonna be talking to a pilot that may and may not be an airline pilot from a different walks of life. I'm gonna introduce something that it's interesting about, about them. So, why don't you subscribe to my channel and uh, turn on the notifications so that when I release a new video every Saturday, just uh, you will be notified about that. That's it for now. I hope to see you on another Kaptan Baha video. Until then, Kaptan Baha out. Tax, uh, tax, taxiway channel and man. Kaptan Baha. Where I these conductors? Of course, I lost my page in here.